in San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Top stories coming up. We'll check you with Justin in a minute. It is Tuesday, June 15th. Steph had to run, so Sarah Coast is here today. Hi there. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. We were just catching up off camera because we see each other now and then, but, but it's... we don't get a really chat. <laughs> uh, I forget. Uh, Girl Scout cookie fan or not? Yes. Okay, me too. Well, Did you buy any last year? No. No. <laughs> because the people that were normally here saying, hey, my kid's selling Girl Scout cookies, we were all spread yeah, to the wind because you know, of COVID. And you don't have the Girl Scouts really out, out outside the stores as much or knocking door to door. Mm -hmm. so. so there is a surplus. I mean, and we're talking a sizable surplus of leftover Girl Scout cookies. That's right. So millions of Girl Scout cookies have gone unsold this year, and it's not because of the thinning demand for Thin Mints. Girl Scouts USA said they'll be forced to donate or sell 15 million boxes before their expiration date runs out in 12 months as local troops nationwide canceled their sales routes for this year for COVID safety reasons. A spokesperson said this is unfortunate, but it's given this a girl driven program and the majority of cookies are sold in person. So it was to be expected. So in normal times, they sell like 200 million boxes a year that generates $800 million in sales used for programming camps. But, you know, some Girl Scout leaders are pointing to declining membership in the civic organization, about 1.7 million in 2019, down 30% from a decade earlier. They're also citing an associated press report that came out in December about child labor used for the palm oil that's used in some of the cookie recipes. So about 12 million of those unsold cookies are sitting at two bakeries that make them Little Brownies Bakeries and ABC Bakers. Um, and they're helping the local troops donate them to local food banks and the military, while the remaining three million are in the hands of local troops. So some troops are encouraging people to buy boxes online, and the organization did partner with Grubhub last year to deliver such orders to donate them to health care workers and other frontline workers. By the way, the last time Girl Scouts faced anything of this sizable, a, uh, a, a comparable blow, World War II. It's crazy. Yeah, due to a shortage of sugar, flour, and butter. So 15 million boxes or so still so ready to go. So let's do what we're good at. <laughs> and, and buy some cookies. And buy some cookies. <laughs> I'll take 1.5 million boxes of Thin Mints, please. Yeah, no diets have been canceled this year. Let's look, look at today's 9 at 9. Authorities have found the body of a San Antonio man in the Guadalupe River. Divers were searching for Victor Villanueva and Cassandra Kendrick Sunday after they went into the water to rescue two children caught in the current near Seguin. Kendrick's body was found on Sunday. A mass dispute in a grocery store leaves a man dead in Georgia. Authorities say the cashier asked the customer to cover his face. The customer went outside, came back, and started shooting, killing the cashier and wounding a deputy and security guard. He is now in police custody. More than 1,000 people had to be evacuated from a rural town in Illinois after a massive chemical plant explosion. The entire building was engulfed in flames. The smoke could be seen 40 miles away and even showed up on weather radar. This morning, President Biden is in Brussels wrapping up his meeting with NATO leaders. Their talks will be centered on threats posed by China and Russia. Tomorrow, Biden will sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Immigration and Customs Enforcement getting rid of a controversial Trump-era policy. The Victim of Immigration Crime Engagement, or VOICE, was enacted in April 2017. It was widely criticized for deterring victims from reporting crime out of fear of deportation. Vice President Kamala Harris is meeting with Dreamers today. This comes as the Biden administration pushes to revive two bills that would grant DACA recipients legal status. Today also marks the ninth anniversary of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Southwest Airlines back up and running after having shut down due to a computer network issue affecting the way they receive weather information. The issue also affected Delta and Alaska Airlines booking sites and apps. Governor Greg Abbott has signed a bill into law that allows college athletes to profit off their own name and likeness. Texas is the latest of 15 states to pass similar bills. It will go into effect July 1st. Stephen Colbert hosted The Late Show on Monday before a live studio audience for the first time in 15 months. CBS says every audience member was fully vaccinated. That's today's 9 at 9. I'm sitting there before bedtime last night watching TV and severe thunderstorm.
warnings keep popping up on the screen last night. Did you see any of that activity? It was asleep. Well, you look out the window, there wasn't anything no. really here in San Antonio, but we did have storms in the area. Yeah, we did. It was it was a great sight to see some downpours in spots. We're going to take a look at some of those rainfall totals. It was definitely hit or miss. A lucky few did get some rain and there were some gusty winds with some of those storms. Thankfully, no damage or anything like that. Right now we're sitting at 83 degrees. Clear skies outside north northwesterly winds at about six. Dew point is at 70. That number should drop off a little bit this afternoon. Still, we're going to get that heat index up around 100. No surprise there. And there is a 20% chance for rain back in the forecast today. That includes here in San Antonio. So keep your fingers crossed for a little bit of rain this afternoon. Right now we're at 83 at the airport, 76 Seguin, 85 New Braunfels, 81 Hondo, 78 out in Uvalde. And a quick check on the tropics. We're watching still those three systems, although one out in the Atlantic doesn't look all that great. Tropical Storm Bill is moving away and our system in the Gulf still really hasn't organized yet. But we think that it will. We'll talk more about where it heads. And again, we'll look at some of those rainfall totals from yesterday coming up in just a bit. Guys. And taking a look outside with Trans Guides 35 at Martin. Traffic looking like it's going pretty smoothly. Also there at US 90 and 36. Top stories we're following today. ERCOT asking Texans to reduce their electricity use immediately through Friday. This after some power plants were facing mysterious outages yesterday. These issues have placed a strain on our state's power grid. ERCOT predicted record demand, but with so many power plants coming offline unexpectedly, ERCOT put out the call for conservation. Many plants are expected to come back online throughout the week. Controlled rolling outages would be ERCOT's last resort if demand does not improve. So what can you do to help conserve? You can set your thermostats to 78 degrees or higher between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Turn off all your lights and pool pumps. Avoid using large appliances like ovens, washing machines, and dryers. And if you don't need something, ERCOT is asking you to turn it off and unplug if possible. Speaking of the heat, amid uh, conservation efforts, the city opening cooling centers. Most have opened their doors this morning. Now officials plan to have the locations open all throughout the week. You can find the cooling center nearest you right now on KSET.com. You can also call 311 for more information. We are learning more about a situation that keeps growing. A man is behind bars this morning facing arson and assault charges. Started when police say Kevin Rodriguez was evicted by, from his home by his roommate. You're about to see him on screen. Rodriguez accused of trying to burn down the house and assaulting someone with a sledgehammer. This happened last Wednesday at a home on the east side. Police records say another man was recording the whole thing on his cell phone. Rodriguez allegedly stole that man's phone after kicking and hitting him with a sledgehammer. That bystander was treated on scene is expected to be OK. Damage to the home was relatively minor. A small sigh of relief for residents of Austin. Police say they've arrested both suspects in last weekend shooting. Yesterday, 17-year-old Jeremiah Tab was arrested in Colleen while enrolled in a summer class there. The first suspect described as a minor was arrested on Sunday. 14 people were shot on 6th Street Saturday morning. One of those victims died. He's identified as 25-year-old John Cantor visiting Texas from New York. And last check, another victim is still listed in critical condition. In your morning headlines, a fire is still burning at a chemical plant and another volcano erupts. A commercial pilot helps a private pilot land on a highway and getting your dog some exercise without going outside in the summer heat. Let's say good morning to David Sears. Hi, David Sears. That's one of those. Why didn't I think of that? Right? Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good idea. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, we're going to start off with this. Watch the part of your screen. Did you see that? Boom. Mm -hmm. I'll show it to you again here in just a second. That is a huge explosion. It's an explosion at a chemical plant in Rockton, Illinois. Black smoke filling the sky. Looks like the whole place is on fire. There's a couple of shots there. You see the trailers of these 18 wheelers right here in the loading dock just burning up. That explosion and fire started yesterday morning as of a few hours ago. It was still burning. Folks who live within a one mile radius under a mandatory evacuation order. Needless to say, that explosion got the attention of a lot of people living in the area. We heard some explosions around 7:15. Didn't think anything of it, and then a couple minutes later, we heard like a lot more louder explosions. So we stepped outside, and all you could see in the sky was smoke. Cause there's burning, flying debris at our house, and we're worried that the house is going to catch on fire. The owners of the facility say all their employees are safe. There were about 70 on site when the explosion hit. No word on what caused that explosion in fire. The fire chief says it could be burning for days. Firefighters actually stopped pouring water on the fire. 
They're afraid the water would actually pick up chemicals and then drain into the local river. An evacuation center has been set up for those who had to leave their homes. Unfortunately, they don't know when they're going to be able to return their houses just yet. All right, let's take it to Italy. You are looking at an eruption of the largest volcano in Europe. This one located in Italy, Mount Etna. It erupted last night. Great pictures of the eruption behind a church of a town not far from the volcano in Sicily. That's the island off the toe of the boot of Italy. The eruption could actually be felt for 30 miles away. All right, this is the big guy helping out the little guy. A student was with his instructor flying a Cessna 172 above the skies of Broward County in Florida. That's the plane right there. They tried to pull off a high performance maneuver when the engine cut off. So now they're having to glide. The instructor tried to get a hold of emergency crews on the radio. No luck, but a commercial pilot flying a United plane heard the calls and jumped in to help the pair get that plane on the ground. Do you think it's a good idea to land on the highway? Yeah, man. Put it down wherever you got. You look good. Okay. Well, I'm so scared. You're looking good, man. Your approach looks good. I think you're going to be fine. Uh, and you just quit on you. Oh, but there's a car. <laughs> Maintain a faster than normal airspeed so you have something to work with to put it down between cars. Uh, put it down in front of them and uh, they'll see you and stop. I'll try, I'll try. You're looking good. Watch that truck. I landed, I landed, I landed. We're on, oh, we're on the highway. We're on the highway. All right, good landing, sir. I'm going to tell Miami you're okay. Wow. Absolutely incredible, wasn't it? That was the key. That pilot kept those two guys pilot, uh, calm. They actually landed on an I-75 there in Florida. The instructor, as we mentioned, pretty calm through the whole deal. The United pilot able to keep him focused. The FAA investigating the cause of that engine failure. All right, now you're paddling to school with Jonah Lee. Yes, paddling. You're on board a kayak with Jonah. Forget the bus, the bike, the car. He kayaks across a channel at Pearl Harbor. It takes him about 10 minutes to maneuver the half mile. When he gets to shore, he actually catches a ride with a friend for the rest of the way to school. Jonah says he always asks what happens when it rains. He said he gets wet. And there was that other time when he got wet unintentionally. The kayak capsized. I was able to get back on my kayak and <laughs> hobble back to the dock all soaking wet. And luckily I carry a waterproof bag and so all my, you know, uh, devices and electronics and things were, were safe. Ah, smart young man. Jonah ran track, was on the swim team, he just graduated. Now he's headed to the Coast Guard Academy. There's a stunner. He wants to get a degree in mechanical engineering. All right, and finally, we know it's hot here, but have you ever been to Las Vegas this time of year? Ooh, really hot. Not just for humans, but also pets. So Ray Santa Pietro came up with an ingenious idea. He has started a business called Run Dog. Inside is climate control. I'm not sure that's how he pronounces it, but we'll go, we'll go with that. <laughs> Run dog. He's got a climate controlled van and he's got a treadmill inside the van for the dog. He shows up at your house, gets your dog some needed exercise without burning up its paws. Uh, they have four legs, not two. They need twice the exercise that we do. So, uh, you know, ultimately us walking them for a few blocks. That's nice for socialization. It's good for bonding and you should do it. This is not an alternative to that. Yeah, Ray says the dogs get a pretty good workout. They go about a mile on his treadmill, so they kind of burn up the treadmill without burning up their paws out on the sidewalk. This is something I deal with every single day with my two dogs. Yeah. What am I going to do with them? Because so, it's so hot. Yeah. So Mobile pet gym to the rescue. Yes. I also take them on to run errands to the stores that allow dogs. Uh -huh. So they yeah. get like a mini walker. Oh, that's good. In AC. Yeah. yeah. All right. Would you ever did consider something like At that? 100%. Okay. Call Run Dog. 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 I'm sure that's how they say it. <laughs> David's cool. He knows what he's talking about. That's right. Thank you, David Sears. Appreciate it. Oh, that's funny. 9-11 right now, about 85 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. They kick off to Fiesta just two days away. Later on GMSA at 9, a look at how you could win a free getaway or $100 gift cards. Details coming up. And later on, we bring in courtroom expert Eric Hernandez for a look at some of the big trials happening soon. Plus... And good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at a new facility, part of the San Antonio Food Bank. Take a look, volunteers out and about early this morning. The cool part about this facility specializes in helping kids in our community. Plus, the food bank starting an affordable housing project. We're going to explain all this right after the break. The San Antonio Food Bank is an integral part of our community. And now as we enter the summer months, they are looking 
to the community for more help. They're stepping up their game with new facilities and a new big project. Max Massey joined us live from the San Antonio Food Bank. Max, what are we looking at here? Good morning, guys. We are here in the new facility, a facility specializing in helping kids in our community. Joined here with Michael. So, Michael, what prompted this new facility? Well, you know, um, kids facing hunger in San Antonio, that's what this is all about. This is the Najum Children's Kitchen within the Mays Family Culinary Center. 60,000 square foot kitchen. And, um, you know, summer's our highest time of need because kids facing hunger. About a quarter million kids um, face hunger in the summer in San Antonio. Those are the ones that are at risk. And, you know, volunteers behind us now, that's what they're doing. They're making meals that are going to go out literally this afternoon and this evening for kids. A quarter million kids in our community. Now, big announcement this morning. Not only the new children facility, but also affordable housing. Yeah, you know, we're, um, we're still testing this facility out. We're actually going to do a ribbon cutting in August. So a little preview for you today. Um, but in New Braunfels, um, later this morning, we're going to do a groundbreaking for our first housing effort. Um, you know, so many people um, want to live in New Braunfels but just can't afford to. Maybe they're working at a more lower level service economy. So these 51 units are dedicated to families with kids who are working in New Braunfels, can't afford to live there yet. We're going to help them out. We're going to save them some money, get them financially secure in three years, and graduate them just right out of poverty. Now, you guys, your mission, help people fight hunger. Now you're kind of pivoting to affordable housing. Why? You know, it's, it's really more about how do we provide a secure San Antonio? You know, we're not going to solve poverty with a canned good. Really thinking about the larger issue of poverty is it's education and housing. It certainly is food and employment. So we're going to look at a comprehensive framework. Okay, so the groundbreaking today, 1030 to be exact. Yep. When do you hope to have the project done? It'll take a year. So our hope is that before the school year that's a year from now, all those families moving into these um, apartments, their kids will be ready to start school in New Braunfels for the first time. And I know those families are going to be so excited about it. All right, Michael. Well, thank you so much. And guys, as Michael alluded to, 250,000 kids in our community need help over the summer. We're trying to avoid a summer crisis here. We're going to be talking about more on that, more on the need for volunteers this summer. We'll check back in with you at 930. Guys. Thank you, Max. Food Bank doing so much good for our community. Absolutely. Thanks, Max. See you in a bit. Uh, Justin is back now, and he has somewhat of a roadmap of uh, Monday's showers and storms. It was nice to see the radar active last night. We had some good downpours in spots. Now, not all of us got rain. In fact, a lot of us did not, but right. there were some yeah. spots that did. Let's take a look at some of the totals. Uh, Stinson down there in Southern Bear County, about a tenth of an inch. Places like Pleasanton, Floresville, you picked up a little bit of rain. Uh, the highest total I could find was down there near Goliad, 1.15, and then the Kerr and Bandera County line about 0.8. So there were there were some decent downpours. By and large here in San Antonio, not a lot of rain. I know we could certainly use a little bit more. We're still doing okay. We're at 16.8 for the year, still about two inches above average, but a little bit of rain during these summer afternoons is always a good thing. We'll see if we can get a few more showers in the area this afternoon. That possibility is there. In the meantime, sunny skies, 83 degrees right now at the airport, 85 Stinson, 83 Kelly, and 82 in Randolph. If we do have a wind out there, it's a light northerly breeze at this point. 79 Bernie Stage, 81 Boulevard, 79 Tarpley, 81 in Hondo, 83 Pleasanton. You're up to 83 in Del Rio and 84 right now in Kennedy. Dew point tracker, and I think th this holds some good news here. The dew points will come down into the 60s this afternoon, so we're starting to see slightly lower dew point totals. And then as we get towards the weekend, dew points could actually fall into the 50s. Now, the flip side to this is once you get some drier air in here, the air temperatures go up. So it'll be hot this weekend still, but there won't be as much humidity. So if that's uh, something you enjoy, uh, it, it does look a little bit better. Forecast heat index today will still be in the triple digits here in San Antonio. Yesterday, the heat index got up to about 103. Today, probably somewhere around 100, 203. And most everybody will see triple digits when it comes to that feels like temperature. Here's a satellite picture. There's not much out there right now, but what I'm watching here on water vapor, a little disturbance up here across northeast Texas with the flow the way it is. That should work into our area this afternoon hopefully helping to generate some of those isolated showers and storms we were talking about. And the forecast does show that. This is around 7 o'clock, just some hit or miss uh, downpours. And like yesterday, there could be one or two storms on the strong side that just produce some gusty winds. Uh, we saw that around Seguin yesterday, but uh, we're not looking for any sort of widespread severe weather. As we get into tomorrow, some more stories, some isolated showers and storms. And so there's a 20% chance in the forecast tomorrow too. Tropics. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, last couple days. That system out near Africa yesterday 
uh, is starting to progress off to the west, there is a 10% chance of development, not looking as great as it once was. Tropical Storm Bill, that's moving away. This is going to move into colder waters, fall apart. So that's going to go away. No big deal there. But of course, we have the system in the Gulf of Mexico. 70% chance of development over the next five days. I got to tell you right now, it doesn't look like much. The computer model has been very consistent, though, in developing a, a center of circulation area of low pressure here and pushing it north. And the future cast does show that uh, that development uh, should occur. But the latest track takes it towards East Texas, Louisiana, we would miss out on any rain and in fact we would be on the dry side of things which as I mentioned would keep us pretty toasty this weekend. So there's no rain in the forecast through Sunday but as we get into next week there could be some chances so as we're looking way down the line maybe an encouraging pattern change. 20% chance Tuesday Wednesday 10% Thursday less humidity Friday and Saturday and of course Father's Day Sunday it is also the official start to summer. Temperatures will be in the upper 90s with the sunny skies, guys. Hot grilling weather. That's right. Ooh. The sun's still out at 1031? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's when the solstice is. I That's understand. Right. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Right yeah. now, it is 922, 86 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. What has this California grad going viral? We'll show you a speci the special message behind her graduation pictures. Welcome back from working in the fields to graduation. A University of California, San Diego student graduated with her bachelor's degree over the weekend. Her graduation pictures in the fields where she worked with her family have gone viral. Laura Acevedo enjoys, introduces us to Jennifer Rocha. These are Jennifer Rocha's graduation pictures taken in the very fields that she worked in throughout college. During my winter break, or like summer break, I was working with my parents. Rocha wanted her parents to be in her pictures, crediting them for teaching her the importance of getting an education. That's what made me want to go back and just recognize my parents because without them, I wouldn't have this degree. Rocha grew up in Coachella. Since her junior year of high school, she worked in the fields overnight after going to school and cross country practices, spending the night planting strawberries with her family. They were like, hey, if you don't go to college, you're going to be here. And it didn't take long for her to realize the work her mom and dad did for years was not easy. I was like, yeah, I don't think I want this for a forever job. Rocha is graduating from UCSD with a degree in sociology with an emphasis in law and society. Her next goal is to go into law enforcement. To show the people that there's good people in there and there's not just bad people. She hopes her pictures serve as an inspiration for other immigrant families that hard work pays off. Being like, hey, I recognize you. I see all these migrant workers. It's a tough labor. But hey, if I could do it, then your kids can too. I'm sure her parents are so proud of her. Laura Acevedo reporting again. Hard work does pay off. You go, girl. <laughs> More head on GMSA 9 right now. It's about 927. Well, court is back in session and there is a lot on the dockets. A look at some of the trials we are watching next. Plus, Fiesta season is almost officially upon us. Coming up later, how you can go ahead and get involved in the fun and sneak peek at something we are working on here at KSAT 12. Well, on June 1st, the Cadena Reeves Justice Center in the Bear County Courthouse opened up for in-person jury trials and hearings for the first time since the shutdown in March of 2020. The courts have been busy since then, and Erica Hernandez joining us to talk about the latest. Good morning, Erica. Let's talk about the uh, health protocols. Those seem to have changed a lot in the past few weeks. What are the current restrictions at the Justice Center and the courthouse? Hey guys, good morning. Well, those are constantly changing, even mm -hmm. this week, that they have changed again. Now those protocols, what we're hearing is no mask required, for those vaccinated, but those who are not who are not vaccinated are still required to wear them. Also, you cannot be uh, it's the social distancing. Let me rephrase that. The social distancing now is three feet instead of the six feet that was required. There's also new protocols allow for more trials to take place now, which hasn't we haven't seen that at first it was only one to two trials to take place a week, but these new protocols are making it easier for judges to call dockets for more jurors to go in and for more trials to finally start taking place. It's been a slow start, but things are 
happening at the courthouse. So as as far as trials, you were saying some have taken place. Any important things that we need to know about? Yeah. So trials that we cover on a you know on a weekly basis, high profile cases have not occurred, but trials are happening. We did cover one last week, which was a stalking case of Bobby Martinez, and we covered this case because this was the first full in person jury trial to take place since COVID. So we were actually able to see how this all went down. There's a lot of technology that they're using. They're still using Zoom. They're still using, I guess, how can I say it? They have cameras all over the courtroom to show different aspects so there's not so much interacting between people. So you don't have to, the attorney doesn't have to walk up to the stand. They show something on a screen. It, it's, there's, still, there's still restrictions, but it is easing up. And if I recall, the jury returned a guilty verdict in that particular trial. Uh, what hearings and trials can we expect in the coming weeks? So we, it's going to get even busier. So mm -hmm. tomorrow we have the hearing for Delaney Chavez. She is the mother of James, baby James Chavez, whose remains were found last month inside a West Side mobile hall. This is just a hearing. It is not a trial, but she will be making, I think, her first in-person um, hearing tomorrow in court. We also have Roy Hernandez on July 6th. This is a murder trial. This was a cold case from back in 1999. He wasn't arrested and charged until 2017. He will finally have his trial. And then, of course, July 12th, this is the big high profile case of Otis McCain. He is the one who is being charged with killing SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi. All these are coming up. All these we're following. And we have that open court newsletter as well. You can sign up for all the latest, and we have the courts tab on ksat.com to keep you updated as well. Erica, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Erica. Let's go outside with live cam on your Tuesday. We're already jumped up into the mid to upper 80s here in the Alamo City, Justin. So it's just going to be racing up here over the next uh, couple of hours. Clear skies right now. That was not the case yesterday. I want to show you a picture that came in on our KSAT Connect. Beautiful shot out of Kingsbury which is just uh, around the Seguin area. You see the thunderstorm there to catch a lightning strike like that. Just incredible. Uh, we appreciate these pictures as always. This is the best way, by the way, you can communicate with us picture wise, sending in uh, to KSAT Connect. You can find that on your KSAT weather app and we can share these photos that you take. We appreciate uh, the, this photo. That is a really good one. Pollen count. Uh, that is not today's pollen count, but you know what? It's not much different from yesterday's. Uh, mold is low, pigweed is low. We have a little bit of grass out there too. Temperature wise, 82 Boulevard, 85 New Braunfels, 80 Seguin, 85 in Gonzales, 83 down in Pleasanton. So yes, temperatures are on the way up and we'll be close to 95 this afternoon. 20% chance of an isolated shower or storm. Very similar to yesterday and we'll be watching the radar closely for you this afternoon. Guys. And uh, morning commute was really uh, not very good, especially north of New Braunfels, and we still have problems out there. This is 35 Watson Lane area, Kohlenberg Road. That's north of New Braunfels. I believe northbound was the biggest problem. It's been a problem all morning long, so expect that if you're headed up towards San Marcos or Austin today. 35 at Weeder looks great. So does I-10 at Vance Jackson. A vital part of our community is in need of help. The San Antonio Food Bank. So leaders tell us they had an influx of help during COVID, but since then, things have taken a different direction. Our Max Massey live there now. Details on how you can get involved and why it's extra important during these hot summer months. Mr. Massey, good morning. Yes. Good morning, guys. As you can see, volunteers already out and about this morning doing what they can, putting together what looks like ranch chicken sandwiches. They look amazing, smell even better. Joined here with Michael. Now, we are seeing volunteers this morning, but you say the need for volunteers in the summer, super high. You know, it's part of that secret recipe that allows us to be super efficient. I think the community knows us for being able to stretch a dollar, but part of the secret is volunteers. You know, um, the need for us in the summer is greatest. Kids are out of school, many of them in low-income households that would have gotten breakfast or lunch during the school year. So we ramp it up in the summer, and that means we ramp it up with volunteers. Uh, we saw when the pandemic started, we saw the aerial view, the devastating mile-long lines. Have you seen the same amount of volunteerism since then? You know, pre-pandemic, we had about 1,000 volunteers a week that supported our work. It jumped up to 2,000 during the pandemic. And you're right, many of them were out in those mobile distributions. But as we've been able to lessen those, you know, and part of the efforts working, it's meant we had need more people in our kitchens, out on the farm. And there's literally 100 in the warehouse today helping pack boxes for seniors. So yeah, 2,000 a week now is the need. And it's not just handing out food. You say there's other aspects of volunteering. Oh my gosh, I mean, from the fun stuff in the morning, not in the afternoon heat, out in the garden, in the farm, planting, um, harvesting. I mean, people love that. 
In our kitchens, we have a kitchen here and in New Braunfels and at Morgan's Wonderland Camp, brand new as well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the traditional get in the warehouse, help us pack up food boxes or produce bags that can go to seniors and to families all across the region. Um, and there's more. But those are the highlights. And uh, last question for you. If someone is watching and is interested in volunteering, how do they go about doing that? You know, easiest way is our website, safoodbank.org, or um, give us a call. We'll get you scheduled up, and especially groups. You know, think of high schoolers needing service hours or folks needing to do some camp stuff during the summer. We're ready for our big groups. All right, Michael, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions about how to volunteer, where to register, we have all those answers. Just head to ksat.com. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Max. Well, speaking of the food bank, today is another chance to give back and score a free Fiesta medal. Goodwill is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank for a food drive and medal giveaway. All week, if you take five non-perishable food items, you get a free Fiesta medal. This will be going on different locations each day. Today, you can drop off donations at the Goodwill on Austin Highway from 1 to 3 p.m. Tomorrow's giveaway will be at the Marbach location. The food bank says the most wanted food items are things like peanut butter, cereal, tuna, rice, beans, mac and cheese, and canned goods. There are also taking other items like baby food, diapers, and pet food. All right, help us out if you can. 938, about 86 degrees. You are watching PMSA at 9. Next, did you hear about you can win a free getaway or even gift cards worth $100. It's pretty simple to get involved. We'll show you how next. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, my name is Sophia Christensen, and I'm this year's Fiesta Teenage Queen. Viva Fiesta! Meet the Women's Club Fiesta Teen Queen for 2021. I'm a senior at Reagan High School. I really love science and history. Um, I'll be majoring in biomedical science at Texas A&M in the fall. And when she graduates from college, she hopes to work with athletes. My like, dream job is to be a sports medicine doctor for a professional football team. Sophia understands the importance of volunteering as part of her roles in the National Honor Society and the Women's Club of San Antonio. Giving back to the community is super important to me. I think it's really important that we help other people and other organizations that might not have as much as we do. And when you have the ability to volunteer and give back, I think everyone should do it. And the Fiesta event she most looks forward to. I really love the Women's Club flower show because um, I get to participate in it every year by making cool wreaths, floral designs, or just floral designs that really like resemble Fiesta and all the colors. And when she takes her crown off, she enjoys watching movies with her brother and sister. My favorite movies like are the Star Wars series, and then I really like old 80s movies that you know just make you feel good and it's like relaxing to watch. It feels good to say this. It probably sounds even better to hear it. Fiesta officially starts this week, and there are some big events only days away. Viva Fiesta, and RJ Marquez is live with us to run down some things you need to know ahead of Fiesta. Now, this is very different for us. We're, we, we're, we're used mm -hmm. to the hard April schedule of yes. like when things take place. So, you know, give us the yeah, rundown I, on but, how it's going to go. But I could still feel the excitement, especially coming from you guys. Like, there's definitely a vibe coming here because we are excited. Of course, Fiesta 2021 is only days away. We're at the start starting point of it this week. But you can get in on some of the Fiesta fun right now. So we want to tell you about a really cool Fiesta giveaway that we have going on. We're doing a Texas Eats Fiesta Show sweepstakes. So this contest runs through next Wednesday, and we're giving away a hotel stay, some gift cards to some top restaurants in our area which I'm sure David Elder has visited. Man has the toughest job in this business. <laughs> Love David, Elder. <laughs> David, of course, is the host of Texas Eats. The top prize, which includes the hotel stay and restaurants, is valued at more than $800. All the information you need is on our website. And keep in mind, you have to be 21 years or older in order to win and also live in our viewing area, San Antonio, Bear County surrounding area. Remember, Fiesta Fiesta gets underway this Thursday at Hemisphere Park with Fiesta Fiesta, but you still have time to enter this giveaway. So a lot of excitement there, guys, with that giveaway. Way. And of course, as we get ready for uh, Fiesta Fiesta on Thursday, so it should be pretty fun. So guys, if you are planning to have some Fiesta fun and have not been vaccinated for COVID-19, 
No worries, organizers have got you guys covered. So a mobile vaccine clinic offering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine will be available at four Fiesta events and it all starts Thursday with the aforementioned Fiesta Fiesta. Metro Health will be at Hemisphere Park from three to seven in the evening, getting people vaccinated. But that's not the only place. There will be mobile clinics from 8 to 1 p.m. on Saturday at the Run to Remember and also the Mission Reach Flotilla Fiesta from 10 to 2 p.m. You can also get a Fiesta medal at both of those clinics. Pretty cool. And finally, there will be a clinic at the Day in Old Mexico and Chariale event from 12 to 5 p.m. this Sunday and next Sunday. There is no pre-registration needed and it's all free. All you have to do is walk up and get that vaccine. So not a bad deal, guys. You get a medal at some of these events mm -hmm. and you're also getting a vaccine. Pretty cool stuff. RJ, there. my favorite part right now is seeing some houses decorated with Fiesta decorations. I have had my decorations up for a couple weeks now. Of course, mm -hmm. they got melted with the rain. So like kind of looks like sad decorations, but it's exciting <laughs> to see some of these houses decorated. And yes. it all folds into yeah. what you're talking about next. Right. So we're going to be talking about the Fiesta Porch Parade. And you know what? We don't want to show you guys anything yet because we want this to be a surprise. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you, as Sarah mentioned, some awesome themed Fiesta decorations from the front porch of San Antonio residents' homes and reveal the winners of our decorating contest. There's also going to be performances by some big time musical acts, including Black Eyed Peas, Ava Max, and AJR. This is all part of a special that Mark and Stephanie hosted that will air on KSAT 12 this Friday at 8 p.m. and also stream online. So I'm going to ask you a quick question about this, Mark. Yes. What's kind of been the coolest thing about the Fiesta Porch Parade? Because we know it's, a, it's different. This year, we've been talking I, about a different fiesta, but I want to know one of the coolest. Things. I signed a non-disclosure agreement. Eric, the so right I'm not, answer. I'm not to say anything. Wow. The the best thing yeah. about it about this uh, that yeah. it's that it was so uh, that people were so active and so involved in a first time a first of its kind mm -hmm. fiesta event. And what I love, and you got to see this firsthand, yeah. is the reaction of some of the people when they find out they want they want their whole category. It was great. Yeah, I really loved being yeah. part of that. That yeah. the performance is pretty good. Uh, the decorations here in the front yard are great and uh, one of the, my favorite parts of the evening is the performances by the San Antonio Mariachi Academy. Yeah, definitely can't go wrong with that. Fiesta and mariachis and a lot of fun and we're going to be talking about Fiesta throughout the rest of this week. So you bet. this is just the start. We're going to get ramped up here. We are. Know. Fiesta 2021. But Porch Parade, Friday 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. RJ, thank you. Thank you, RJ. Viva Fiesta. That's so fun to say. I, I can't. Know. Just last year was a time warp, and here we are, reality, and it's okay that it's mid-June and we're talking Fiesta. The unfortunate part is it's like we're out celebrating Fiesta, and it's hot, Justin. Yeah, this is kind of like old-school Fiesta events, right? It feels that way, you know, but if you hang the ring rock right now, it would be more accurate. That's, so that's, that's true, that. and it would most likely keep a lot of it away, right? <laughs> it would, because uh, we're, we're in a dry stretch here. We did get a little bit of rain yesterday, so there is that. There will be some more slight chances today, but you look outside right now, no rain in sight, clear. Temperatures on their way up 83 degrees at the airport north northwesterly winds at about six miles per hour and the satellite picture gives us the all clear uh, maybe a couple clouds there in Bandera County. But that's it clear here in San Antonio for sure 83 Port SA 85 New Braunfels 80 and Seguin 81 Bernie stage still in the 70s around Kerrville 76. We had a little bit of rain just south of you yesterday 82 Rock Springs 82 in Victoria which as a place that also received some rain yesterday. Dew points are in the 70s right now, so still elevated. My hope is that these numbers come down into the 60s today, which still will produce a heat index, but maybe not as bad as it could be. Uh, the heat index right now is 87 here in town. That's what it feels like. Feels like 93 in Gonzales. Feels like 84 Eagle Pass, 85 in Del Rio. Forecast heat index today, well, this is just about where we were yesterday. 102, the forecast there for the feels like 102 in Pleasanton, 103 in Catula. So we're still right there. You know, the thing is we trade off some of those uh, dew points for higher air temperatures and it just sort of balances out there. Uh, the bottom line is just going to be hot through the weekend. You look at the big picture and uh, we do have a little bit of rain up across the northeast. Maybe a couple showers in Nebraska and then some action in the Pacific Northwest, but all in all, this is a quiet weather pattern. Our ridge of high pressure is sitting over the four corners right now. And as we look at water vapor, and this can show us sometimes the little spins in the atmosphere that can help to generate showers and storms. It does look like we have a little bit of a piece of energy here that will swing into South Texas today. So that should help to give lift to some isolated activity. Very similar to yesterday and the computer models are showing that. This is around five, six, seven o'clock. You're going to see these pop up showers and storms that generally don't last very long. They could put down some gusty winds, some brief heavy rain, but you're not going to get a lot of rain out of it. 
yesterday some of the big, biggest totals we saw were about three quarters of an inch uh, with this activity and then most of it will go away once we lose daytime heating and then on Wednesday comes right back another chance 20% on Wednesday afternoon. And of course we are watching what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico still a very disorganized area here doesn't look great right now but the computer models have been very consistent on developing a tropical low down here in the Gulf of Mexico and this should get more organized It'll probably take a couple of days. It'll sit here for a couple of days and then move north as it does. It looks like a lot of the rain is going to stay out over the Gulf Thursday and Friday. And then by the weekend, if we're going to see any rain here in Texas, it's probably going to be far east. Texas we will be on the dry side of things. So Saturday, Sunday looks hot and dry. A lot of times on the back sides of these systems, you get some pretty dry air and that can actually help to crank up the temperatures and I think that's what we're going to see. So the extended forecast here 20% chance of rain today 95 94 tomorrow 20% chance and then just a 10% chance on Thursday less humidity Friday Saturday Sunday and sunny skies primarily over the weekend with those air temperatures jumping into the upper 90s but thankfully those dew points will be a little bit lower and if we're looking down the line guys there's a little bit of hope next week for some rain area wide we'll keep you posted. Okay. I like the hope. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Justin. 951, about 87 degrees. Well, some big changes coming to Disney, not for the rides or attractions, but COVID protocols. I'll tell you next. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, shortly after the winter freeze, it looked like a lot of plants and palm trees around the city had died off. But as our Justin Horn found out, they made a quick comeback this spring. He takes us out to the San Antonio Botanical Garden and learn exactly how to miss that story tomorrow on GMSA at 9. Take a look outside with Trans Guide real quick. We are looking at 35. That's in the San Marcos area or something? Yeah, just north of uh, between New Braunfels and San Marcos is the leftovers from a major accident from early, early this morning. Still stacking in those northbound lanes. Unbelievable all these hours later. Take your time if you're heading out that way. Justin? And temperatures are heating up. Sunny skies right now. We'll see some clouds though this afternoon. 20% chance of some showers and storms today, tomorrow, and then uh, drying out a little bit this weekend. And it will be hot this weekend. First state shutdown due to COVID is reopening today, and that would be California, home to Disneyland. Yeah, Disneyland confirms physical distancing requirements end today, mm -hmm. along with their masks. Yep, they said we're excited to welcome out-of-state guests beginning today, at which time we'll discontinue, discontinue the requirement for on-site temperature checks. The state has removed the physical distancing requirement with respect to guests as well. I like that they say we will allow guests to self-determine distancing. That's right. Face coverings no longer required for fully vaccinated guests, both indoors and outdoors at Disneyland. Guests ages two and up who are not fully vaccinated must continue wearing face coverings indoors except when dining. While guests will not be required to show proof of vaccination, vaccinated guests will self attest that they are in compliance prior to entry. How does that compare to Disney World as of late? Uh, last I checked, you still have to wear a mask inside there at Disney World, but Things change every day. You guys just got back. That's right. All right. Good to know. Sarah, thanks for stepping in today. Always happy to be here. Have a great day.